So are you constantly looking for new opportunities? Well, congratulations, you are not the only one. Now what happens when you get an opportunity, when you come across a business, what do you do with it? The pandemic has forced a lot of people to look for alternative ways to make money and for once and for all, control their income. And because I wanna see you win with everything I've got, the last 22 years of experience of me coaching and working together with entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs, I wanna share with you the best attributes of how those who become first generation cash flow millionaires treat their business starting in three, two, one, let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm G-Dot. Steady through the rigor, yeah I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven. Like. What's cracking, everybody? My new smart guy, Matt Cipolla, here, hailing to you from Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois, a direct west suburb of downtown Chicago. And listen, the pandemic of 2020 has caused a lot of people for looking for different ways to pivot, adapt, and adjust to find ways to make more money through the vehicle, potentially, of entrepreneurship. Now, for those of you that found a business, I want to help you understand how you should perceive your business if you want the most amount of success from your endeavors. Now, whether you've reached out to me, like many have, or you started your own business, got involved in my industry, which is a life insurance industry, or you got involved in real estate, you got involved in uh, uh, creating a fitness company, these are universal principles that applies to anybody. How you properly treat your business and steward over your operations is everything. All right, so let's get right into it. Four different ways to treat your business. Hobby, employee, independent contractor, or professional. Let me break down real quick hobby. What are some of the attributes? What's some of the things that people do when they treat their business like a hobby? Well, number one, they're uncertain. You see, they're very uncertain about what they just got involved in. They're not specific. They don't have any deadlines. They don't have any goals. They don't have any requested time frames of when they're supposed to accomplish something. Like they'll get to it when they get to it. In the meantime, they're scurrying about, scurrying about, still trying to make ends meet, but never really treating the business like a business that whenever they have time on the weekend or on a holiday, that's when they get to the business. And in this situation, they make little to no money. But yet, here's the hard part when I when I come across people that treat the business like a hobby. Although they just get to it when they get to it, guess what? They're frustrated why they're not making any money. And the big reason is they take very little ownership or responsibility for their own actions and the output of their business. Why? Because other things come up. Now, I get family. I get social activities. You know, for example, when I decided to become an entrepreneur, listen, me being Filipino, I get invited to a lot of family events. Weddings, birthday parties, anniversaries, right? Quinceañeras, debuts, a lot of different things. Barbecues, just hanging out. I get invited to a lot of things. But I made a commitment to never worry about money ever again. So I told my family, listen, please, I will accept your invitation to the wedding, but you gotta know, I'm not gonna be there to get blasted like the rest of you guys. I'm gonna go to the wedding, I'm gonna go to the barbecue, I'm going to the birthday party, I'm going to the anniversary, I'm going to the quinceanera, I go to the family event, but I might be there for two, three, four, five hours, but I'm not gonna be there all day like I used to be. I might even plan ahead and drop off a couple things and plan a couple things, I'll contribute, I'll do my part as a family member, but please do not expect me to just hang out all day, and by the way, the last thing I'm doing is getting hammered. Because I, listen, nobody loves a party more than I do. But to me, the, on, the, the honest reality that I came across and when I started to understand my truth is that I just didn't want to deal with the recovery. <laughs> I didn't want to deal with the hangovers. I don't want to deal with, oh my gosh, it takes me another one or two days to get over a hard night of partying and drinking. I just didn't want to deal with the recovery. Guys, true story. So now, if you do want success out of your business, the challenge with treating your business like a hobby or getting to it whenever you get to it is the reality, you make zero money, zero money. And if you find yourself uncertain with no specifics, making little or no money, you're not taking very much ownership or responsibility over your business. Now, you may have gotten a fancy EIN number, or you incorporated with LegalZoom or something like that, but don't expect just because you went through all the legal paperwork, just because you went through the formalities of starting a business that you expect money out of the business just because you got a pretty domain registered with GoDaddy or has had a website set up, but if you're not putting any effort because you don't have any specifics or deadlines, 
and you're not holding yourself responsible to anybody, holding yourself accountable to anybody, please, understanding you're treating your business like a hobby, the only person that you have to blame is yourself. Second attribute, you treat your business like an employee. Many entrepreneurs treat their business like an employee. What am I talking about? You gotta understand, the school system and the job system has done a very good job in helping you become a fantastic employee. Employee, not to think for yourself, but to follow rules, to stay within conformity. And when you have your own business, you start your own business, sometimes the residual of that mindset still remains in how you're running your own operation. What am I talking about? You're waiting for somebody to tell you to do something. Like, what am I doing? I don't know. Well, I get to it when I get to it. What are you going to get to? I don't know. You're not studying. You're not doing any due diligence. You're not getting involved in your craft. You're not studying your industry. You're not even getting to know your competition, what they do well. Why? Because you're waiting to be told. You're waiting for somebody else to do you something. Let's we had something in the military that if we find ourselves standing around, we had a saying to all the fellow Marines, hey, man, look for work. Look for work. Look for work or you'll be put to work. So in, more so as an entrepreneur, if you're not getting yourself to work, virtually you're unemployed. You're not creating any results because you're waiting for somebody to tell you to do something. An employee entrepreneur says, man, I'm gonna be home by five, I'll be home by dinner. Well, that's how you were as an employee working for somebody else. I'll be home by dinner time, I'll be home by six o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock. Listen, the reality is this. You might be home at nine o'clock. You might be home at 11 o'clock. My CEO mentor, Patrick Ben David, <laughs> Not only created a video called Life of an Entrepreneur in 90 Seconds, but he's got a book out there called Life of an Entrepreneur in 90 Pages. And he says a part-time entrepreneur puts 40 hours into the business. So the reality is, unless you're willing to put at least 40 hours, you're still considered a part-time entrepreneur. Not a hobby, you're just a part-time entrepreneur. You're treating your business like an employee, but you're a part-time entrepreneur. Full-time entrepreneur puts 60 hours a week into the business. An all-in entrepreneur puts 80 hours a week into the business. Now, some of you may not like that answer, but here's a hard truth. That's the facts. That's the reality. This is your baby, but you cannot treat this like you're working for somebody else. You're working for yourself, and sometimes the worst boss to work for is you. By the way, the scary thing about this whole work from home and stay at home, some of people you know, lack discipline working from home because the TV's there, the distractions are there, the fridge is there, the kids are there, everybody's there. When do you actually really get to work? And here's the thing too, as an employee, very little system or structure incorporated into the business. That's why they're waiting for somebody else to tell them to do something. And not only waiting to be told, they're waiting on other people to do it. But right now as you're starting your operation, you are it. You're the CEO. You're the manager. You're the employee. You're the janitor. But unless you treat this like that manner, you're treating this business like an employee, guess what? You're gonna have little to no revenue generated because you're not investing back into your business. Employees wait for somebody else to pay them to go reinvest back into them. Okay, so you want me to go on this trip? Okay, well, what are you paying for me to go on this trip? Listen, you go on this trip to learn at a conference. Nobody should tell you that you should be paid or told and you put on a flight. That's your investment into you. See, employees say, well, do I have a company card? Do I have a company car? Where's my corner office? No, that's the way employee treats business. So here's the reality though. From a revenue standpoint, if you treat your business that way, you will be grossly underpaid. Might as well get a job working for somebody else. Third way to make money is an independent contractor. I was that for 14 years. I was a salesperson, I was a producer, I was just selling life insurance and annuities, I'd be doing dinner seminars, mailers, buying leads, you name it. I was an independent contractor. Even though I was, I'm a team player by default, I consider myself a lone wolf because I was only responsible for me, myself, and I. You know, they talk about the independent contractor being in a gig. Once I once I complete this gig, once I complete the sale, I'm done. Next, sale. Next, complete the transaction. Next. And an independent contract doesn't really care to build a team. You know, what's the effort of putting into somebody else if they're just gonna leave me and go be my direct competition? 
Oh, I got to deal with somebody's headaches. And that's, that's what they consider babysitting. I don't want to babysit nobody. Listen, if leadership is not for you and something that can be cultivated in you, leadership is beyond you. Because helping people, building people is called leadership development. Leadership development. What is leadership? It's influence. How can you help influence somebody to do something they normally wouldn't do themselves? Well, that's called leadership. And sometimes independent contractors only want to lead themselves. They don't want to worry about themselves. They're practitioners running a practice, which is fine. It's me, myself, and I, me and two, three, four, five other guys, that's fine. But that's where they find themselves in versus scaling and creating an operation, having systems and processes to take them to 50, to 100, to 200, to, right, et cetera, et cetera. And independent contractors desire little, little responsibility. Once I'm done my sales, once I'm paying my bills, once I take care of my house, I'm good, I'm done. That's all you want to worry about. By the way, that's cool. But if that's the way you want to treat your business, you don't really have a business at all. You're an independent contractor. And here's the thing, too. As an independent contractor, the moment you stop selling, guess what happens to you? You stop making money. The moment you stop transacting, you stop making money. So ask yourself, if you find yourself in this category and you stop selling, are you really retired? If you find yourself in this category and you stop selling and no more money comes in, are you really financially free? Are you really your own boss? My friend, your clients own you. The marketplace owns you. Other factors own you. Why? Because you still have to sell. Why? Because you're a lone wolf. And you did very little to reinvest back into you, or more so, you did very little to reinvest back into other people. And nobody cares about your operation more than you. You know, every time I left as an insurance producer and I had my staff, I'd always be worried when I left on company pay trips because, you know, as an insurance industry, as an insurance professional, you do well, the insurance companies fly you all the world, which is cool. Now, I always would wonder, and by the way, I would freak out when I'm on these trips. We'd go to uh, Hawaii, we'd go to Maui, we'd go to, we'd go to uh, Bahamas, Bermuda, we'd go all over the world. You know what my biggest concern was? Running a business as an independent contract, even though I had three, four, five people working for me. My biggest concern was, what are you doing back home when I'm gone? Are you looking for work like I would? Or are you looking to grow the business like I would? Because you don't create systems and build leadership development and incentives for your people to want more and to create more, guess what? Nobody cares more about your business than you. And this will never create a life of its own. Once you're done with it, it's done with you. And so, here's the, here's the thing. You only make money when you sell. You're only as good as your last transaction. The last but not least, the fourth way you can treat your business is treat your business like a professional. Yes, like a pro. That's why we created this t-shirt called Entrepathly, where we treat business like sport, like we want to study our craft, we want to study our competition, we want to study movements, we want to study trends, we want to study patterns, we want to set uh, uh, um, things that trigger certain behaviors, we want to anticipate those so therefore we can be ahead of the marketplace. We want to be initiators, not reactors. I can go on and on about how professionals treat their business. That, that when you show up, you put people to work. You know what I mean? Like, for example, uh, when you wake up in the morning, you know you're putting other people to work. You're forcing people to get out of bed. Because you're raising the standard versus you getting up out of bed and you're waiting for somebody else to tell you to do something because you're beating on your leader's bulletin or beating you in the marketplace. The professional, they look to dominate the marketplace. They look to dominate the trends. They look to dominate, anticipate, and get ahead of things and innovate and skill up. And here's the thing, speaking of skilling up, professionals always raise their current skills and always looking to increase their skills. Now, I'm going to share this article right here in Harvard Business Review. It talks about restructuring the recruitment process and building a business. Harvard Business Review says right here, it says, unless you innovate your skills, you will be outdated in 18 months. Think about that. If you're sitting here as an independent contractor, that's why the insurance, for example, my industry, the insurance industry, that's why the insurance industry hasn't innovated for 50, 60 years. Because everybody in the insurance industry is an independent contractor. Very little professionals scaling and actually growing a business. By the way, I was here for 14 years. 
The last seven, eight years, I've been here now treating this business as a professional because I'm increasing and looking for new skills. I'm looking for work. I'm looking to adapt skills. I'm looking to take initiative. I don't like being reactive. I like somebody else out maneuvering me and out dating. Why? Because I'm studying my craft. Number four, part of being a professional, you're vocal. You declare your intentions. That, By the way, how many times do you see these elite CEOs in the marketplace declaring their intentions on Twitter? It's called be being a professional as an entrepreneur. They cast a vision. Here, it's all about what you're just doing, what you're just doing, what you're just doing, what you're doing. Oh, who, who, what do we got to do? What do we got to do? What, what do we got to do? What you're doing, what you're doing, what you're doing. Here, what you can become. What your efforts can translate to long term. You're casting a vision. The person not only you are today, but the person that you could become, what you can be a part of the purpose behind what you're doing. That's how professionals would treat their business. And guess what? Professionals, yes, I want to outline this. They love accountability. They love accountability. You know, professionals that are running a business are responsible to a board. For the companies that are publicly traded, they have responsibilities to the shareholders. That's why you hear these monthly conference calls and quarterly earnings reports. Why? Because they're holding themselves responsible. They're responsible for providing value to their shareholders, the marketplace, they're taking public money, or their customers that's helping them grow the company, their investors that's investing into the company to grow, to grow the company. Listen, I'm an investor in multiple companies. Guess what I get all the time? I get earnings reports. I get uh, 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 emails for me to understand where that company is right now because they love accountability. They love accountability. So if you're treating your business as a professional, guess what you do? You don't run away from accountability. You wanna step up to accountability because when performance is measured, performance improves. Do you want to improve? Well, then start treating your business like a professional. And here's a cool part. If you do this, if you do this, guess what? You increase your value to the marketplace and therefore you increase your income that you generate for your business and for yourself. And guess what? You increase the longevity of how your business not only translates in the future, and if you have a big enough vision and you work hard enough as a professional and doing what you're doing, guess what? You translate that into multiple generations long after you've made the decision to become an entrepreneur. So before I let you guys go, if you wanna check out more research on the hidden industry that will make you become a millionaire, check out this video here too as well. And also, again, for those of you afraid of accountability, check out this video called The Hidden Truth. Check out this video. Well, I took our best guys, we took 450, 450 of our best guys to Maui two weeks ago. By the way, Maui loved us. So Maui, thank you so much. We're playing volleyball on the beach, we just opened up uh, Maui, uh, they thanked us so much for bringing 400, 450 of our people to Maui. We opened up their economy, put millions of dollars back into their economy. Photographers were hired, food services were hired, hotel was hired, excursions were hired. Why? Because we brought 400, 450 of our guys to Maui two weeks ago. So Maui, thank you so much for putting us in your news. It was a pleasure for us to be there. So that being said, guys, I love your thoughts, feedback. What are your thoughts here about how you treat your business? Hobby, employee, independent contractor, professional. Put them in the comments section below. Your follow-up questions, your feedback, your comments, I'd love to know what you're thinking. So with that being said, guys, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like, follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted next time we upload our next episode. That being said, guys, I'm your Money Smart Guy here, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. Be a pro.